We are now live. This is the January 9th edition of the Node.js LTS Working Group Meeting. Um, with us today, we have myself, Miles Borns, James Snell, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, how do I pronounce your last name? Senkpeel. Senkpeel. Close enough. Um, and Michael Dawson. Um, thank you all for coming with us today. Um, we have an agenda which you can find online at github.com slash node.js slash LTS slash. Sorry, I, ha I actually had the video playing in another screen and that just messed me up. <laughs> um, so the issue is uh, issue number 179 on the LTS repo. Um, we have three uh, primary issues to get through today. Um, a list of potential Semver minor backports. Um, should we move to a three-week cadence in Node.js quality with speed? Um, and then I'm just going to quickly add one more thing to the agenda, which is to discuss um, new, re new release dates. Um, if we uh, end up moving forward with doing a minor. Um, so, Michael, because the other, because the Semver minor one is going to be the majority of the of the time, do you want to get started with uh, quality with speed? Now you're I'm, you're I'm, muted. Yeah, now I'm now I'm unmuted. <laughs> Sorry. Um, sure. You know, basically, you know, uh, Miles and I had some discussions a while back, and we ended up writing this uh, outline, which we've titled "Quality with Speed." You know the the premise or the base, or the basis is that you know the Node.js community does a lot of things, and many of those are made it motivated by both being able to continue to move quickly, and by being able to achieve good quality. And so you know I tr we tried to write up uh, all the things that we've been doing to achieve that, and kind of put some context around the different things we've been doing with Sigim, with the benchmarking work group, and a bunch of other things. Um, and so the discussion here is, you know, we put this together. Hopefully some people have had a chance to read through it. Um, and, you know, what we want to do is move forward to, you know, refine it and find the right place to publish this if we think that that's the right thing to do. Um, and, you know, there's lots of, there's, there's varying options from, you know, Miles and I could publish it as something that, you know, we put it together on our own or on IBM's behalf. We can say no, you know, it, it, it's more of the uh, the overall community mandate, so let's put it out as you know something in the LTS repo or something else. And so we put this issue, posted this issue to get feedback from other people in terms of what they thought was the right way to go, and and general feedback on you know what we've written up there as well. So I guess since Miles and I were involved already, we'd be looking for like James or Jeremiah if you have yeah. any feedback for us on that front. Yeah, I have to apologize. I completely missed this when you uh, posted it originally. Um, so I'll take some time today and read through and um, get some feedback. Sounds good. Yeah, it, ha it has kind of been over the, the, the Christmas or vacation period, so not surprising yeah. that we're just ramping back up to take a look at it. Oh, yeah. I, th I, th I think I've finally got my GitHub notification backlog down to only about a couple hundred. So. <laughs> That's only a day's worth, right? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Jeremiah, you had mentioned that you thought that this would maybe be something that should just go on the website. Do you want to expand on that? Um, uh, well, where else would you put it? I don't think it should go in the LTS repo. Like, I think it should be like a, a Node.js blog post, probably. Unless you have plans to put it somewhere else. Yeah, no, that, that would make sense to me. You know, if, if we have enough consensus that this is what we all believe as a community. I think that's the right place for it to go. Okay. So yeah, I guess I guess that definitely. Uh, I mean, it's pretty hard to review as a guest. So maybe either I mean, we could make a pull request directly to the website and review it. Have the LTS working group review it there, or if you really thought it would be better, you could pull request it first to the LTS working group, and then we could move it. But I, I'd be happy enough doing it to the to the uh, to the website if we think that's you know where it belongs. I'm happy to submit a PR there. Yeah, I think the the only real hanging question on it being a blog post would be: Is any of the information in this post 
um, stuff that we don't have currently documented? And would it be good to have any of that living in collaborators or in the LTS repo? Oh, right, yeah. Or, or even like instead of a blog post on the website, like should it be somewhere in the documentation there and then you know we, we post a shorter blog pointing to it, right? Because I, I could see, you know, it's, it's more of, I'm thinking it's more than a one-off kind of thing. You want new people coming to be able to come across this and sort of understand, yeah, okay, these are all the things that they're doing to support this app. Right, okay, I thought it was supposed to be a blog post, so. I mean, I think it could still be one. Mm -hmm. um, what about a guide? Because those are visible. Yeah. Not so much a guide as explaining what we're doing. I don't know, but I mean, <laughs> what are the other? I mean, this maybe like this information could be adapted into like the into like an. Is there like an LTS page on the website? No, um, but uh, to be honest, I, you know, things like the guides and topics and stuff that we've been doing, um, I mean, to your point, they're, they're not very visible at all. And personally, I'd rather, us, I'd rather see us pushing more content out to the blog um, than into continuing to publish individual guides and topics and, and stuff like that. It's just, it, it needs to be in a more visible, centralized place, and the blog just seems like a great place for it. Yeah, I guess if, if the blog is, like, does it remain visible there? Then it's probably not a bad place. I don't see a reason why we couldn't have it, like, so under the docs area, there's, like, this ES6 page. There's an FAQ and the, like, links to our, like, API docs and stuff. I don't know why there couldn't be, like, here's, like, a documentation about our, I don't know, like, re release process or LTS process or whatever, or maybe somewhere else like that, but also post it as, like, a blog post when it comes out. Like we could do that. Yeah, that, that makes sense too. So, like, yeah, just, I think I think getting it out in a blog to make it visible is a great is a good idea, and then having somewhere that it sort of sticks around is also a good idea. So, so uh, Michael, do you want to then um, submit a pull request to the blog with that as a blog article? Um, it can go through a review there, and then we can choose to lift any of the content into uh, the readme's as appropriate. Does that make sense? That everybody else is in agreement. I'll go ahead and do that. Yeah. yeah, I'll try okay. to get uh, Rod to review that later too, if possible, when you pull request it. Rod, okay. So as part of the pull request, we we'll want to make sure Rod takes a look, right? Okay. Okay. Excellent. So that takes care of um, number one seventy two. Um, so number one seventy three. Um, this is a really quick one. Um, so. I, I wanted to just suggest that we consider moving um, to a three-week cadence instead of two-week cadence on the meetings. Um, we have not had enough content or things to discuss that we need a meeting every two weeks. We end up skipping them, and then all of a sudden, it's now a month in between meetings if we end up skipping one. Um, does, does anyone have a problem with that? Nope. No, no I, I don't think we've met any more recent than that anyway. So. Okay, excellent. And then, so we'll officially move to a three-week cadence with our next meeting being scheduled for the 30th. Um, I will find where we have, I don't think we have that documented anywhere, so I'll, I'll go ahead and document in our readme um, when we meet, and maybe we can get, uh, William Kapke, I think, has a calendar on that, so we can get that yeah. updated. Yeah, I have I have like a calendar invite from that somewhere, but I don't know which calendar it's from. So I'll probably need to adjust that myself. Yeah, he has Sounds a Google good. calendar, and I think if he adjusts that, if he puts it on there, you should automatically see it adjusted. I think that is your calendar. I think on his, there's only the CTC and TSC meetings still. Okay, I'm sure. I think if we tell we him, could, we could probably put in like the LTS one there. Yeah. It'd be, it'd be good to have one, because <laughs> I've already added that one. OK, excellent. So that gets us through there. Um, so this moves us to the bulk of our, what are the bulk of our meeting is going to be uh, focused on, in my opinion, which is uh, Semver Miners. So the first thing that you know we need to just discuss um, would be quickly uh, new release dates. 
Um, first and foremost, is there anyone that we have on the line who's opposed to doing um, a Semver minor release on both LTS lines in the next release cycle? Uh, what do you mean by release cycle? So um, we've been doing a monthly cadence right now, so it would just mean the next monthly release, which is currently scheduled um, for February 7th, um, would be a Semver minor instead of a Semver major. Did December we last patch. have a December minor, or was it a December patch? The last one was a December patch. Um, I believe the last two were December patches, although the last, the most recent one doesn't really count. Um, and actually, we can give a bit of an update on what happened and why we ended up having to do an extra release last week uh, during the call, if you want to talk about that as well. But um, yeah. for what it's worth, we're going to have... Um, we have a February release, a March release, and then April will likely be the last um, release as part of the uh, active LTS for V4. If we do one in April, depending on how we want to, how we consider the schedule uh, to be aligned. Right. So when you when you say like I have no objection to making the next one, Semper Minor, how would that affect the schedule? So if we take a look, we have issue um, um, where is it? 159, it's, I think. It yeah, we have 159, which yeah. currently has a plan for a February 7th release of V473 and V695 and a March 7th release of V474 and 696. Yeah. Um, what I would like to suggest we do is push the release from the 7th to either the 14th or the 21st and just give us an extra uh, week for RC okay. um, with it being a Semver minor. Um, and then essentially just pushing the following release the exact amount of time. So if we push two weeks from the 7th, that would put us at the 21st for 4 8 and 6 10. And then that would put. Um, um, the 21st of March would be for the Semver patch on 4 and 6. Do we need uh, a minor that soon? I mean, I'm looking through most of this, and I'm not sure that much of this either needs to be backported or needs to be backported particularly soon. So, um, yeah, we, we can move on to... There, there is one that needs to happen immediately, and that, that is the reason why we're having the Which, LTS okay, right now. Not specified um, in here. Yeah, sorry. So specifically, um, the uh, crypto allow adding extra certs to well-known CAs. That is one that needs to be that that people are pushing to have expedited to have our last release be a Semver minor, but we opted to push it one month and do the Semver minor a month later. Um, and essentially, it al it allows. Um, extra certs to be added. It's necessary for do, doing uh, work with proxies. Um, and there's a number of, uh, you know, like clients and uh, third parties who are, who are seeing this necessary um, for even being able to just like put node four and node six into production. That didn't exist on older node versions either though. No. And, and they were not able to, to do this. Yeah. I, I... I know in particular, if it's the one I'm thinking of, I know it's caused us grief in, in the sense of your only other option was basically to say, I'm not going to validate my certificate chains. So that, I think, was the workaround people used before, which I can see why they're sort of anxious to get, out, to get away from that. I mean, there's more than one thing here that could be seen like that, so... So th this was this was one that we had a number of individuals um, specifically request uh, being backported um, quite quite a number of times, and we've also had uh, um, Sam specifically requesting that this get backported because there are um, you know customers that are uh, of IBM that are, are floating this batch and, and want to see it into uh, backported into the streams, and as a very very low. Uh, probability of causing any problems. So, are you are we planning then to do a minor release, 
next month and then another minor release at the end in april no the, the idea was only one minor that's why i wanted to go through all of these so the idea was that they wanted to see these come in as soon as possible so that would cause a minor bump and then essentially that would be the only minor i'm sorry if i miscommunicated earlier the the idea right now is only doing one one more minor on v4 between now and when it goes to maintenance i think i mean i hmm. I would prefer to do the last minor probably in March. Um, just thinking, like generally, um, you know, that's not right at the end. Then uh, it gives us a little bit of time to to fix anything up that's for whatever reason would need to just be patched up. Um, but that gives us the most amount of time to figure out if there's anything that really needs to uh, go in. I mean, um, it, it's it's not necessary. I don't. I mean, do we believe that's truly going to be the last miner ever? Or is it just that that's the last or, time we'll be actively, you know? Once it goes into maintenance, I can't foresee that we would uh, backport features that um, weren't security related. That was the plan to date. Right. Yeah, as far, um, as, far as I know, when it goes maintenance, like... There is no more active backporting, and it's pretty much only uh, major security vulns that'll cause any sort of bump. Right. Yeah. Or like major regressions that are found. So, so, is, so is the idea that because we're um, going to be backporting one, we may as well backport a bunch? That was kind of that. So my thought process was less we're backporting one, so we should backport a bunch as much as we're if we are going to backport this one and do a minor, then we should review the ones that we haven't done to see if there are other candidates that we should right. include. Um, so like I just, you know, choosing the language there a little bit more like so it doesn't sound like frivolous. But the only the only reason why I would push for this to come out and come out sooner than later was that this issue originally came up in um, November and it was at Node Interactive US right before we did the last minor that this came through and landed and it was because of our release cycle that it didn't get through current in time to make it to that minor. So um, people have been waiting for this uh, change already since November. Um, albeit one more month is not going to be the end of the world for them. Um, but there have been enough people who have been coming in and checking in on the progress, and we've been pushing it, that it would feel somewhat unfair to push it another month arbitrarily just in case. Um, yeah, I understand. It, with that being said, you know, another month may not be the worst idea, but I think as we go through, if we go and actually look at the specific ones that we're going to backport, um, you're going to notice that a lot of the changes that are up to land on v4 are actually all quite old um and so maybe we should go through these and then see exactly which one we're agreeing which ones we're agreeing on keeping and then once we've agreed on those see how long those have baked and if there's ones that are more recent maybe another month would be would make sense um but if not then i, I don't really see uh, the month making a huge difference right i mean um, well, there's there's a lot of like old Semver minor changes, um, so I think we need to like. I mean, I, assuming you already have like tried to figure out ones that may or may not be important, like we shouldn't. So one seventy seven. Aiming to backport that many because otherwise we'll like l sorry not like that many in terms of anything, but like continuing to backport more and more because it'll just be more and more work for us right and i mean that was kind yeah, of part of the lts thing that we you know didn't back more that many features <laughs> absolutely and so what i did is i i went and did a branch diff and i audited all of the semver miners that have not landed on four and six and what 177 is is a, is a list of the ones that i thought were worth even discussing right um, okay and I've also gone through and tried to land them and then labeled which ones require manual backports and which, one d which ones don't. Um, and I think if you don't, like if you're cool with it, I'd like to quickly go through this list and I think uh, it will quickly, I think we'll quickly be able to make some decisions on them. Um, so does everyone have uh, issue 177 open right now? Yep. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna just paste the link to make it easy. 
So uh, the first block that you see here is for uh, V4 on excuse me, V4 only. Um, these are changes that all exist on V6 already. First, and maybe Michael would be the best person to ask, uh, adding a ALPN support to crypto. Is this something that you think would be important to backport to V4? Um, someone I can go back and forth on. AL ALPN is, I'd have to say yes. Um, it's, it's not critical for V4, but I think it's something that would be useful in order to start making sure there are people start adopting it. Okay. Um, um, this is, isn't ALPM related to HTTP2 somehow? Well, well HTTP2 um, requires ALPM okay. uh, as far as part of its uh, negotiation. But you can but use it, it on TLS other things. Yeah. even if you don't. Right. It, it's a general, it, it's a replacement for the next protocol um, extension. Um, you use it with TLS to identify which protocol you're going to be um, using over the connection. So it's, it's, it's a TLS specific thing that HP2 just decided to use. Um, oh, one thing I want to mention that I totally skipped just a second ago. Um, one of the motivations for doing this the main motivation was that um, now that 10 and 12 are end of life, um, the deltas that we have between different uh, versions and for module maintainers uh, to maintain is much lower. And so um, I was trying to see what features we could add that would uh, allow people to start using you know, newer features without losing support for older versions of Node and just Giving giving module authors the ability to continue support for v4 without having to drop it sooner um, And that was kind of the overall theme of a lot of these um, So ALPN support James it seems like you're in you're in support of it No pun intended, um, but it does require a manual backport. Is that something that you would have the time to look into? Uh, um, I can look um... I haven't looked at that code in, in a while, so I'd have to mm -hmm. take a look. But I, I will add it to my to-do list. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So uh, the next one that we have up is number 4463, Exposed Statistics About Heap Spaces. This is uh, a patch that exposes more stuff from V8. Um, seemed to me something that could be useful, especially if people are doing any sort of diagnostics. Um, does anyone have any thoughts on this one? It lands cleanly. Has, has anybody been asking for it? People have not explicitly asked for it, no. Because that, that would be one of my key things, is like if we have people asking for things, then it's it's like, okay, uh, customer poll. Um, the other one is like how much of a risk is it in terms of the change itself? <clears throat> so this one is is pretty it's not it's not very it's adding a lot not subtracting a lot so it's not really going in there and doesn't appear to be uh, causing too much uh, you know like of a, too much of a delta but right. you know if no one's asking for it then people aren't using it there's no reason to necessarily backport it it can strike it I feel like I used this for something. I did. Um, I don't think it's like super critical. I suppose it'd be nice. Well, let's move forward with just yeah. not landing it for right now. And then if, you know, if people come and look at this issue and say, hey, why did you drop support for that? Then we can reconsider it. Um, so trial process, add I'll get, I'll uh, shell. I'll get back to you about something about that. Yeah, okay. Okay. Go on. Add shell options to spawn. Um, this is one that um, more than one person has requested if it could be backported. Um, and Sam uh, gave a thumbs up saying he would like to see it be backported. Um, it adds the shell option to spawn and spawn sync allows child processes to be spawned with or without a shell. The option also allows a custom shell to be defined for compatibility with exec's shell option.
Right, and the code looks fairly small in terms of quantity, so. Yeah, I, I, I guess I'm back to like, if there's a few people asking for it and the risk looks pretty low, then I'd, I'd vote yes. Seems not super hyper more priority to me either. Yeah, I tend to agree. I tend to agree uh, with whom, Jays? That it's not a high priority. Okay, so should I strike it? <clears throat> I think for now, I mean, it comes back to if we if we have people that are specifically asking for it, then we can revisit it. Uh, people were specifically asking. Yeah, for that, this that's one. what. Uh, oh, James oh, 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 I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> Right. Like I was voting yes specifically because if we had who, who, who was it like asking for it? Um, so we had uh, El Jefe. Um, oh, sorry, that's right. Okay, sorry, I misunderstood what you were saying. Um, no problem. Yeah, if there are people asking for it, then yes, then I think that there's no harm in having it. I do agree it's not a high priority, but if there are people asking, for it, okay. Okay, so the next one is net add net listening boolean property over a getter. So it's just a, a way to quickly check whether or not net is listening or not. This struck me as one of those ones. This, again, had someone asking about it. This struck me as one of those things that could bite people in code if they're doing like a check on listening um, that we may as well, like it's literally just exposing a single, like it's just a getter exposing an internal variable. Uh, it only does a check if there's a handle there. I would vote to not do this. You can do it easy enough if you need to already. I mean, the, the logic for this underscore handle is not going to change in v4.x, so if you need to do it, um, the ability is there. And, you, and it could be easily polyfilled. Um, okay, cool. That, so. Cool, let's kill it. I mean, it's... Did you say you thought there might be a risk if someone was checking this on objects already? Well, I was just thinking that, like, the, if someone is calling, um, you know, the net dot listening ve value that it could throw, but I hadn't thought of what James said is like because it is so simple, it could be polyfilled. Um, yeah. But I guess it would be like it's just it would stop people from half having to polyfill it for the next, you know, year, basically. I would. So that that has worked like that for so long that I assume that most people that really need to check that are probably already checking handle. Okay, yeah. cool. So we'll cross it out. Once again, you know, if people come out asking about it, we can do it. Um, this one is one that I'm actually particularly interested in, which is fs.makedtemp, which is... Uh, <clears throat> yeah. I'd have to say yes. There, there are some kind of good security practice reasons for, for doing this. So. Any, anyone else have any thoughts on this one? You said you were particularly interested. What, what was the reasons for that? I mean, just I, I'm myself having to make temp, temp directories with Canary in the gold mine and have a bunch of code that's manually written that does this that I wouldn't have to write otherwise. So I could just see having ecosystem-wide coverage for making temporary directories a positive thing. Right, OK. Um, anyone else, any thoughts on it? So we'll leave that one. Seems reasonable to pick up, yeah. I think. Yeah. OK, the next one is um, add process.cpu usage, implementation docs and tests. Do we have people that are asking specifically for this? I think we might uh, at node source already float this on v4 to use for ourself, ourselves. We did so it would be nice, probably, if it was back there. Um, I mean, we can continue doing that. I'm pretty sure we do that. Um, so two things about this one, the first being that um, it has not been explicitly requested. This one's similar to the V8 exposing statistics. It just seemed like one that was useful for creating an even keel between the different release lines for doing any sort of um, analytics or you know 
looking at the process. Um, no one has requested it, and it is going to require a manual backport. Um, but Jeremiah, if you're saying that Node Source is already floating it on V4, I think um, we are. I think we are. <laughs> so <laughs> might I, be wrong, I, but I think we are. <laughs> my personal thought process on it, though, then would be if Node Source is already floating it, and Node Source would be willing to send their floated patch as a pull request, then we should just land it because it's already running in production. Mm. Um, but otherwise, no. Do, does anyone have an issue with that? That sounds reasonable to me. Mm, yeah. James, you seem to hesitate a little bit. What's your What's your thoughts? Um, if nobody's asking for it, I mean, um, my, my 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 if folks can use it, I mean, um, it, it's one of those things that they can either float themselves or back or, or polyfill with a, with a native module or something like that. Um, but if it's available, then okay. I don't see, I don't have any objection to it. I guess it's more of a plus zero than anything else. Okay. I don't see any reason not to. I just don't see it as being a high priority. Okay, so how about this? <clears throat> I'm going to cross it out. Jeremiah, if you end up finding that you have it um, floated at node source, and internally node source would prefer us to just land it rather than you having to keep that in your infra, yeah. then... Okay then send a PR, and we can discuss it again on the PR, but otherwise we won't move forward with it. Does that? OK. Yeah. Um, OK, only two more for V6. Thank you all for being so patient and V4. helpful. To V4. Uh, V4, yeah. 7838 clusters support STDI op STDI op options for workers. Um, this <clears> one, again, does not have anyone requesting it. So if we're going to use that as like, the first and foremost um, thing, then, then I don't for it. Um, it did seem like a nice uh, addition to the child process stuff, and the ability to like have the STDI op options to the workers is is good. Um, and because you're working with workers in cluster, that's a little a bit weirder to polyfill. Um, but you know, I'm I'm open to thoughts on this one. Yeah, I think I'd fall back to the if nobody asked for it. Um, I mean, like this allows more configurability, but as I understand it, if you you can kind of already configure this using the silent option. Okay. Well, you know, we don't have any people like explicitly asking for it. Um, let's just let's just cross it off. I would say, in general, unless there's large bugs, clusters probably in relatively low use anyways. So that might either mean that we don't prioritize stuff to it or that stuff can go to it because it doesn't. it's probably not quite as critical. That makes sense. Um, take that as well. So um, I'm going to cross that off for now. And, uh, you know, I'll tweet this list again, and people can take a look. And if anyone has an issue with any of the ones we're choosing not to do, uh, they can bring that up. Um, so last one for version 4, util, allow symbol-based custom inspection methods. This is um, something that was opened um, by Anna. Uh, it allows, uh, like, specifically when you're using inspect, um, you're not able to do it. Uh, so add a util inspect custom symbol, which can be used to customize util inspect output, providing object util inspect custom works like providing object inspect, except that the former allows uh, to avoid name clashes with other inspect methods. Um, this may, again, this one is not being explicitly requested as a backport. Did you, um, did you say it was or was not? It was not. This okay. exists in 6, does not exist in 4, um, but I don't think it's going to be the end of the world if we choose not to backport it. Um, I, I think this one's probably a good one to backport. Um, I mean, it's not being asked for it because, I mean, if if we have developers, if we want to encourage them to start using the new symbol, right, as the index, um, we don't want to have to have modules implement both the both the, the function and the symbol version of it, right? 
um, I should be able to just do it once and then it, it just works. Uh, at the same time, though, we still have there's, there's going to be backwards compatibility issues with that no matter what, because not everyone's going to be on the same thing. So it, I think, I don't know. This one's, there, this one's wait, how will there be backwards compat issues with this? If they're not using, I mean, if they're not using, you know, if they're using 4.7 instead of 4.8. Oh, yeah. Right? I would uh, I would consider this low priority. Yeah. Okay, so you know what? I'm gonna drop it for now and I'll ping yeah. I'll ping Anna. Sure. And if she has like if she I don't think even Anna was like, this definitely needs to be on four. So, you know, she can likely chime in if she has any thoughts on it. Um, for those following along at home, we just reviewed eight uh, different uh, changes and agreed to land three of them um, to give you an idea of you know, how rigorous this process can be. So version six, this is going to be one Jeremiah and, uh, and James, I'm already waiting. Uh, add preserve symlinks command line flag. I would avoid this simply because of how controversial yep. it's been. Um, I think like the people that that need it, my 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 gauge would be the people that need it are probably going to be on the more experimental end and be fine with running current. Yeah, I I would not backboard this one. <laughs> okay, excellent. And then the next two are both related to up, updating ICU. Is this something that we should do? I would say uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't believe there are any breaking backwards compatibility um, issues. So yeah, I would say go for it. OK, so both of these are going to need a manual backport, though. Neither of them landed cleanly. Um, okay. But perhaps that's something we could see if Steven has time for this week. Yeah. Okay, so that ends six X. So now we have four changes, which are for both V four and V six. Although we can choose to take it for some or for neither. Um, the first, James, is your own buffer add buffer transcode. Is this something uh, that you would see having value in backporting? Uh, not not unless people are asking for it. It's a low priority. Okay. Um. So the next one is the one that I was discussing originally, which is crypto allow adding extra certs to well-known CAs. Um, while this one has been discussed at length online, it has not actually come up in a meeting yet. Does anyone have any opposition to this landing? This is just adding. It's not removing, right? Mm -hmm. This is adding the ability um, for people to add custom certs. Um, all right. So I, I, I think I need to review this. PR more. Um, yeah, the issue is without this one, you can be forced into that situation where your only option seems to be to like not validate your certs. Um, and so I'm, I, I, you know, of them, this is one of the ones where I know people. It's causing people grief. They're running in a mode they don't want to run. And I think it's not just that group that I know of. It's other other people in the community have asked for it as well. So. See. You know, and it's 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 in theory it doesn't affect any. You know, it's not like it's opening up something for people who don't use it because it's a new. As I remember, it's a new command line option where you can specify these additional certs. But if you don't do that, it's the same behavior as before. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a command line flag, uh, node extra CA certs. And if those are included, they're run. And if they're not, it's not. Um, I believe I believe that this was particularly useful um, when writing things that are behind proxies that require custom internal certs and don't necessarily have access to the external uh, web without those certs. And it puts it kind of like in, a, in an odd uh, position. Sam Roberts, we can also get to uh, 
chime in on the issue about, but this is one that was of uh, particular interest in, in being backported. Yeah. I, I, I don't see a problem with it. Um, I do remember, I mean, it, it, I ended up letting it uh, go without voicing the concern there. I do have some concerns about some of the usability of it, um, but that's not for this conversation. So I will discuss this later. <laughs> no objection. OK, excellent. So the next one that we have up is child process add public API for IPC channels. Uh, this pretty much just renames a property. Okay, so we can drop it. Like you could already access underscore channel probably for since V10 or something. Yeah. Okay, it just moves it from un from behind the. Uh... Yeah. Okay. Cool. So let's not bother with that. And then the last one is process add external memory. Um, to process memory usage. I think this one's useful. I, I've actually made use of this myself and backported it myself to a couple four ups that I have. So. Yeah, I'd almost think though it follow like it falls into the same category as the CPU kind of one. Yeah. Like, like I'm just thinking maybe we should just do both of those, right? Like. Yeah. Same with the the V8 one previously. Um, like to be honest, I, I feel like we're largely either going for some stuff that's um is like security related or it's something that like was like pretty much impossible to do beforehand. Yeah. Or like required an extensive native module finagling. In which case, like, I mean this is you know probably fine under that. Yeah, I do. I do like that. Like as we look at what's left now on here, it's like we have child process, the spawn option, and the make dir temp, which are, you know, both things that wouldn't have really been able to be done without like a lot of monkey patching. We have crypto, which is if we get that as a security related one, um, ICU, which again is you know like an upgrade, uh, more crypto, and then everything else has to do with like inspection and stuff. Um, so I think for me, process.memory usage does make sense to add, but I do like, you know, Jeremiah's point that if we're going to use that, like why would we not also do the CPU usage? Yeah, I'm, I'm on the same wavelength as that. Like, you know, if we're going to add it, that I, I'm okay with those two. They both seem like we're giving you a little bit of extra information. If you've got something already in production, you know, it's probably a useful thing. So, you know, of the things that we should backport, that's probably on the higher list, you know, help people, things that help people run and manage their applications. So. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, I did actually check, and I would kind of personally like the uh, V8 heap space statistics thing to be backported to V4. Something I use it for, um, well, something that NodeSource source uses it for, that would be nice to have it uh, backport to run on that because I don't think there's really a way to get at that information otherwise. Yeah, and I, I see that as a somebody, if you're actually using it there, then that's actually a consumer that you know is asking basically for it. So it seems reasonable to me. Okay, so that leaves us with. Five for V4 only, two for V6 only, and two for both V4 and V6. I think maybe it's six because we were going to add back in the second one. I already added it back in. Uh, okay, sorry. I guess I just don't see the update. I'll refresh. Okay, yep. Um, Miles, do you think you can keep this old list um, within like a details tag in the issue and then post the new list into it? Um, what do you mean? Do you, do you want to, I, I give you permission to just go through and edit that issue um, in a way that you think would be more clear. 
I, I was just saying, so we keep the original list, but like just have it sort of hidden and add a new one. You can actually add, oh, like, like just like comment it out. You can actually add like collapsible sections to GitHub issues using a details tag. And so. what's the, what does that tag look like? Um, I'll just post it in the issue. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, so now that we've gone through and looked at all of these, um, the most recent one of all of these is 9587, which is at external memory. Right. That landed in 7.2, so that has been out now um, since November 22nd, so, you know, about a month and a half. Do we think that it makes sense to give it a little bit more time than, you know, essentially we'd have another month between now and the release. Um, if we did the regular release um, cadence, uh, if we pushed it another um, two weeks, like I was thinking we might want to, then that would give us um, a month and a half before the release. Um, Jeremiah, do, do you feel like we should have a little bit more time or what, what's your thoughts? I thought the the time was supposed to be live in current for one month minimum. Is that incorrect? For for which any LTS backports or for specifically SEM for miners? I thought it was for any. For any, it's two weeks in current for non controversial changes. Um, but either way, here the the latest one that's on here has already been in current for a month and a half. I think it'll be fine. By the time we get a release out with RCs, it'll be fine. Okay. So then with that being said, do people want to continue with a two-week RC for this, or do we want to push it to a three- or four-week four week RC? How much if, do those RCs get used? I mean, we, we should get, probably check stats on that regardless. Um, but is there really an advantage on having a three or four week RC over a two week RC? Um, I use it every day <laughs> when I'm working. Um, I think some other people may use it. The one thing I've seen RCs used for before, which can be good, is once we have the RC, we can contact the people who are like explicitly requesting specific features and ask mm. them to try using that and then giving them a couple weeks to run that in prod. Right. Yeah. OK. Um, the, the only other thing that I'm thinking about right now is of these, we have one, two, at least three that are going to require manual backports. Um, and if we're doing the regular cadence, we would have the RC out on the 17th. And I'm not sure that one week would be enough time for people to get all these backports in and get them reviewed. So. I would like to suggest, if everyone is up for it, that we push the date to put out the RC to the 24th and then do the release on the 14th. So that's pushing it out one week from what it was, right? Um, well, actually, Oh, wow, this is interesting that I hadn't really considered. Because the 31st is a Tuesday and it's also in January, we actually had six, we had five weeks in between releases for this cycle, not not four. So we right. get a free week. So I say we, I say we take that free week, give us an extra week before we do the RC, and then we put out the RC a week later on the 14th on Valentine's Day, which uh, to, to put the actual release out which only pushes the release one week from where we've um, from where we've originally uh, said that we were going to put it out, and then just push the following release by one week as well um, from the 7th of March to the 14th of March. Sounds reasonable to me. Seems OK. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. OK, excellent. Um, so is there anything in here now that any, like just the last moment for people to express any concerns or thoughts that they have on this? Is everything, is everyone on board with the direction this is going? 
Yep. Yes. Okay, excellent. And then we have ample time for other collaborators to come in, chime in, and let us know if there's you know things that should be added or things that should be removed. Um, but I'm feeling pretty good about where we landed on this. So with that being said, I think that's everything that we wanted to talk about today. We have uh, 10 minutes remaining. Um, Jeremiah, how do you usually check for questions? Uh... I'm not. Let me go to the to the YouTube thing. So really quickly, there's a, there's there's a chat a on the right side of like the YouTube feed. You just look there. Um, I. I mean, we could solicit questions. If you have questions, ask them. Yeah. So we, we I believe, we have about five or six people watching right now. Um, if you are watching, uh, feel free to ping in no dev on IRC or to like at me or type in the channel. Jeremiah is looking in there. And we'll just wait a minute or two and see if any questions uh, come up. And uh, if not, we're, we'll be able to end this meeting a little bit early. Well, I don't think that we're going to get any questions, which I am more than happy with. OK, everyone, thank you so much for uh, coming today. And for our listeners, thank you for listening. Um, I'm going to stop the broadcast now. Have a nice day. Yep. Bye. Bye.